Nigerian security forces are under strong criticisms over alleged misconduct of personnel in the handling of the end-bad governance protests, especially in northern Nigeria. For instance, the Amnesty International has accused security operatives of killing some protesters in Kano, Kaduna, Niger, Meduguri, and Zaria, among others, during the demonstration against hunger, which began on August 1. The Nigerian police, however, disputed the report by Amnesty International, saying there was nothing like that. But amid this disagreement, the Bochi State Police Command has confirmed the killing of one Habibu Aminu by joint military operatives of Operation Safe Heaven during a clash with youths in Lere town of Tafawabale, a local Kopen area of the state. Meanwhile, Cross TV has traced families of those allegedly killed during the protests in different cities in northern parts of the country. Here is a story of one of the bereaved families in Kano. Inside Rijar Lemu quarters of Kano Metropolis, families of the affected victims are gathered to mourn the death of their children, who are said to have been killed by security operatives while protesting against hunger and bad governance in Nigeria. I don't live around the area. I only came to see my parents. I was at home when they called and told me that Bashir has been shot. When we came out, we saw many people running away from the scene. From what I saw, I can tell you that several other people were shot during the protest, including women and children. Mala Muhammad Lawal is the father of 25-year-old Bashir, who was said to have been killed 15 minutes after he left home to join the protest. He said several other people, including women and children, were shot dead by the police on Saturday, being the day three of the protest. I was at the farm when they called that I should quickly come back home. When I got home, I realized my son had been shot. He just finished secondary school. So I was trying to raise money for him to start a small business. Now, all that is over because he has been killed. According to some relatives of other victims, the protesters were chanting anti-government songs when suddenly security operatives arrived at the scene, firing tear gas, canisters in the first instance and then live bullets when the crowd became too much to handle. There were so many people around this area who came out to protest. They were chanting various anti-government slogans. When police suddenly started shooting, they shot some women and children on that very Saturday. A touching story from Kano. And tonight on Daily Politics, we seek to analyze the conduct of Nigeria's security operatives in the coverage of the end bad governance protests. Our guest is the country director, Amnesty International Nigeria, Issa Senusi. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Hamza. And I'm Hamza Idris. I'll be moderating the conversation tonight. To set the ball rolling, here are some tidbits. Of course, Amnesty International has condemned the invasion of the Abuja headquarters of the Nigeria Labour Congress by state-backed security operatives. In a statement, the director of Amnesty, Issa Sunusi, said the raid by security personnel in Nigeria undermines workers' rights to organize, bargain collectively, and take industrial action. The union said heavily armed security personnel stormed and raised its head office in the nation's capital on Wednesday night. However, the Department of State Service has denied any involvement in the raid. And elsewhere, the Pan Yoruba Social Political Group, Apeni Peri, has asked the federal government to probe killings, alleged foreign interest, and calls for military intervention during the nationwide protests in the country. This was contained in a communique issued after its expanded National Executive Committee meeting and signed by its national leader, Chief Ayo Adebanjo, and National Publicity Secretary, Prince Justice Faloy. The group said that the federal government should investigate deliberate violation of rights particularly the circumstances of the killing of those who died in the protests and bring to book those responsible, including security agents proven to be culpable in these regards. Yes, once again, Alisa Asunusi, welcome to our studio. Thank you. Maybe we should start with the latest statement. 
uh, you issued today on the siege on the headquarters of the uh, Labour Congress. Up till now, we don't know who carried that out. Yes, um, it, we heard that uh, the security agencies, um, especially the DSS, had issued a statement denying their involvement. And uh, many Nigerians are bewildered and uh, wondering what is going on. Um, even if it is not DSS, it is not police, um, I think the duty and the responsibility of determining who are those people uh, lie squarely on the security agencies. And they have to tell us. They should have by now told us who these people are because they were said to be armed. Mm -hmm. So who are the people who came to that uh, strategic place in the capital city with arms, armed to the teeth, and they took over the headquarters of the country's leading labor union. This is really something very serious and is a, an indictment on those who are responsible of our security. If they say that is not official security, who are they? And they have the duty to answer this question. A big question there. And then the second tidbit is on the, the Afeni Perry calling for prop. It's like they have joined what you've been calling Exactly, for. exactly. And that's what we are saying all the time. Uh, Amnesty International, as you know, is not a judicial institution. Uh, we are not a court of law. Therefore, whenever we do our research, and our research is evidence-based, uh, is a is a process that has standards that we apply across the world. So we always say that the government should investigate. We use this word so many times to the extent that sometimes I feel that we are overflowing the word itself. Uh, investigate, investigate. Uh, investigation has some importance. Number one, it reveals the truth. Number two, it gives you the opportunity to understand where you have lapses. And number three, an investigation can give you the opportunity to be better the next time. Unfortunately, uh, investigation uh, is like in Nigeria, we are allergic to the word investigation. And whenever these atrocities happen, we ask the Nigerian security agencies or the military or the police to carry out investigation. We believe that they are resourceful enough, they are credible enough, they are uh, effective enough, and they have ample resources and power to summon people, question them. Unfortunately, that never happened. So even this call by Apeni Perry uh, is a call repeated by so many credible people and organizations and the civil society. Investigate what happened, how people lost their lives, uh, what happened across the country from the 1st of August. Unfortunately, uh, not a single institution of government has yet mentioned that it is going to investigate what happened, and that is really unfortunate. And the scary part, not even investigating, to even admit, it's, it's becoming a problem. Uh, for instance, on the first day, after you issued a statement, you gave figure 13, if, if I'm correct. Yes, yes. But the, the police said there was nothing like that. How do you feel, you know, when... Well, well, Amnesty International, we are used to uh, being uh, responded to denials. It's not something new. So whenever we do a thorough work, we sit down and expect denial. You think it, such things doesn't demoralize you to say, okay, they say I'm lying? Well, 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 we have evidence. Before yes. we come to tell the public that one person is killed, we ought to have a layer of at least four evidence. Four? Four. Different layers definitely, of verification. Definitely. And this involves a credible record from more than 10 to 5 people, the families of the person saying that, yes, this is our son or this is our daughter, she has been killed and this is what happened. In circumstances where it allows, we also work with hospital workers who tell us, yes, this person has been brought with injury, gun injury. So we have to go through all those processes and ensure that, yes, this person has been killed. Then we say that, okay, this person has been killed. The issue over this week, which I believe is ridiculous and unacceptable, is a situation whereby all the security agencies are saying that we are not the ones. So the question is, then who, who is responsible? Who has tear gas to fire at peaceful protesters? Who has AK-47 to, to fire at peaceful protesters? We have many, even in this UR report, you have shown an instance where uh, a policeman was firing at people in Kurna Kano. 
So who is there for this man? And if at all there are some actors who are the ones behind this, that means our security is completely down and we are not secure. And mm. it's an indictment on the security agencies. So what we are noticing from this protest <clears throat> is a new dimension. And that dimension is the dimension of de denial, which is dangerous. And uh, that is why, based on our experience in this kind of circumstances, sometimes uh, security agencies decide to wear personal clothing. Sometimes they refuse to make themselves identifiable. They go in vehicles that are not properly numbered or licensed. So at the end of the day, you can never pin down the crime to them. This is a tactic that is widely used in countries where there are peaceful protests and there was a very bloody crackdown. So this is what we are witnessing, where we have people, uh, the police and other agencies saying that we are not the ones. So who are they? Big question. Now, state-specific cases. Up to now, especially we in the media, we are in a serious dilemma because um, residents will call and say something happened. But when we contact um, relevant security agencies, they say that they are not aware. Do you have some specific cases, for instance, uh, in Kano, which is not in public domain, in Borno or in Kazana, that you think you will share with our viewers? Well, uh, let me give you one example of what happened in Sama Rosaria. A boy of 16 was killed by a soldier. And the situation in which that boy was killed is completely unprovoked. Even the military had admitted a responsibility. I think they even visited the... You gave them 300,000. 300,000. I saw it on social media. Some say it's for burial. So, 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 so um, the fact that they admitted is, is, um, is a sign that um, it happened. So yeah. let us say they admitted and it happened. But the issue is, what are they doing to tell us the kind of uh, process or the, what they are doing. They say they have arrested the soldier that committed that crime. But at the end of the day, that is the end of it. You will never hear about it. And there was a case in Azari, that video that went widely viral. Someone shot a teenager at close range. He shot the teenager at close range and he died instantly. And that person, up to now, you know, there was denial about who he is or what he is. Yes. But the question I always want people to be asking, who are those that confronted that, those protesters in mufti, uh, in personal clothing, uh, in black, you know, uh, uniform? Who are they? It is this, is, is, are we saying that, you know, some people came into our country with guns, and specifically went ahead and confronted. Well, the bandits we are contending with. Very good. So, so this is the issue. And let me give you another example of a very sad story we hear from Kazana around Kofa Sauri, where uh, we had that some people came out and gathered to, to demonstrate and they were confronted by tear gas and, and firearms. And all our sources said it was the police. And when those people, there, was a, there is a general hospital nearby, and people run into that general hospital. And uh, running after them, uh, the security agencies fired a lot of disproportionate tear gas into that hospital. Into hospital? Yes, yes. In Katsina? Yes, definitely. So, so we are still investigating this uh, 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 about injuries and death. Uh, we already have uh, audiovisual evidence about that, but we are still. You, you even have audiovisual. Yes, yes, yes. So, so the issue is, the issue is, for how long will our country continue like this? That is the question. Why is it that whenever you have peaceful protest, uh, protesters are confronted with uh, firearms? Uh, is AK-47 the appropriate, proportionate response to people who are not carrying any arm at all? Of course, I will ask you more on that, but I would like to make our viewers know that we made an attempt to actually have any of the police or any of the security agencies to be on this program so that they can respond to some of these issues, some of these verifiable facts that uh, uh, Mr. Issa Sunusi is giving, but to no avail. So maybe the, after we finish, maybe they will now try to, to respond. Now, how do you think security operatives should even approach protesters? 
in the first instance? Well, well uh, the international law is very clear mm -hmm. about peaceful protest. Now, I want to start from the beginning. Okay. And the beginning is that politicians or political leaders or security personnel, they have to accept the fact that Nigerians have the right to peaceful protest. No matter who is the president, no matter how good he is, no matter how bad he is, Nigerians have the right to peaceful protest and nobody, nobody, nobody has the right to deny that right. Okay. Number two, uh, in a civic, democratic, free society, that right is very important. Um, we have a situation in this country whereby those who are supporting government can come out and do a lot of protest and they will start in peace and finish in peace. But when you have an opinion that is dissenting, the reason why you are, whether it's because there is too much banditry in your state and you want to come out and talk or and, and protest, you see that you are facing a lot of obstacles. Instead of, but the duty of the security agencies, according to the international law, mm. is that they should facilitate protest. They should facilitate? Yes, they should facilitate. That is what the international law say. They should facilitate. And facilitating does not mean providing protesters with placards. It means making sure that infiltrators don't come into them and making sure that they, they do their protest from the be beginning to the end peacefully without allowing infiltrators or thugs to interfere and without anybody from the protesters going out of his way to do anything wrong. They have the right to say, okay, you can't do this. You have to go back into the protest. Or if somebody from outside, a thug, came with a weapon, they have the right to say, no, you can't go in. They can even arrest him. This is their responsibility according to international law, which Nigeria has signed off to. And while the protest is going on, it is very clear about uh, the international law is very clear about the use of force. The use of force has to be only proportionate to the danger. So if, for example, <clears throat> you know, uh, the way tear gas was used, mm. for example, during this protest, is absolutely against the international law, completely against the use of the law of using tear gas. Uh, there was a case, a video, that also went viral, whereby uh, at Moshud Abiola Stadium in Abuja, a boss, full of protesters, uh, uh, a, a tear gas was thrown into that car, uh, that boss. And according to international law and the rule of using tear gas, you cannot throw tear gas into a confined place where people cannot escape. You can't do that. If you do that, you are violating the law. They threw that tear gas into that boss, and the boss was full of people. Now, <clears throat> another issue that I will have to raise is mm. that why is it that whenever we have peaceful protests in this country, our security personnel go there with AK-47? You don't want them to go with that? Because it's not a war. It's not a war. Of all the peaceful protesters, of all the protests that happen in this country from the 1st of August, there is nowhere. I am not saying there are no miscreants. I am not saying there are no criminals. I'm not saying there are no talks, but nowhere can you give me an evidence to show that people came out with weapons. But you know they, they, they can be unruly, and they sometimes to serve as deterrants. When, that is when, why when they are unruly, there are equipment, there are teasers, there are handcuffs, and there are buttons, and there is tear gas. Not but, live ammunition. But not live ammunition. It's prohibited completely. It's prohibited. There is no way that can happen. If the commanders give you an order, according to international law, they say that, okay, go and open fire on these people. You have the right to refuse to carry out that order. And if you carry it out, you will be held liable, you will be held responsible for carrying out a lawful order. But you are, you know, in, in Nigeria, so they say, obey the first order before you complain? Well, well, in Nigeria is not a jungle. We should not be uh, allowing ourselves to live like that. The, the world has changed and uh, the world we are witnessing now is a world of people coming together to push for their interests. Okay, well, is that beyond giving 
um, statements and, and all that. Amnesty, do you also make a lot, your lot complain, the, you know, maybe international court and all that to say uh, some people are not actually doing what is expected of them? Well, you... well, at that level, um, there is what is called, um, we can be able to file public interest uh, case, okay. but, but we mostly use the international courts or regional courts, that is the Air Course Court, where we, we are sure that there will never be any bias. Uh, we believe in the uh, importance of the international law. And apart from that, uh, when an investigation is set up by government, we, 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 we make presentation, we present a memoranda to help that committee do its work. We can even share our findings and our evidences with those kind of committees. Unfortunately, up to now, no one is even talking about those committees, which is really shocking to everyone. And Nigerian authorities, on many occasions, they accuse you of being meddlesome interlopers. That's uh, what is your business and, and all that. Do you feel pained by that, or is it out of ignorance? De definitely, we feel pained because we are not politicians in the first place. Number two, we don't partake in political things. We don't have no any political interest. We are not affiliated to any religion. We are not affiliated to any ideology, even democracy, because we know that sometimes democracy produces the most ruthless dictators and tyrants. So we don't even believe in any ideology. What we believe in is humanity and human rights. And we, over the years, have been facing a lot of backlash, a lot of threats to our lives, a lot of attacks, a lot of sabotage, a lot of things we have been facing. I don't want to say them because mm. it is not about us, it, about, it is about the people. But what we are saying is that we are doing these things because we want to make our country peaceful and prosperous. And there is no way you can have a peaceful and prosperous country in a situation whereby someone who is carrying a gun can open fire and kill like 10, 15 people and get away with it. There is no way you can have prosperity in that kind of country. And that is why we are saying that let us have a society that is respecting human rights. Let us make sure that uh, our security agencies, you know, we, we, we hold them in high esteem. We respect them. And every individual must also value the work they do because they are sacrificing their lives to protect all of us. Yeah. But, but at the same time, we are saying that do it according to the law. Do not allow yourself to be used to undermine the people and their rights because the very people that you are protecting should not be the very people you kill just because they are raising placards asking for better life, asking for end to hunger, asking for end to corruption and mismanagement of public resources. You should be, your priority should be you know, going after the bandits that have been killing our people for years. Uh, terrorists have been killing our people. So the priority should be on them. Anybody who will come into Abuja city center to say that I want to do protest, I don't think that person is harmful. The most harmful people that the government should be worried about are those terrorists and bandits that are killing our people and even doing video and going on TikTok, displaying the money they are collecting as ransom. You know, we now live in a situation whereby people are abducted and sold. Sold in the sense that they will call your family and ask you to pay some millions. Before if you, you do, get Yeah, out. but if you don't pay, they will kill your family member. And many families have to struggle with agony, generate that money, sell whatever they have in this world, and pay the bandits, and nothing happened. So we should be worried about those things, not, not the harmless people oh, who are civil, who are law-abiding, who don't carry arms, who don't sabotage Nigeria, who come out to say we are hungry. All right. Finally, uh, because we have run out of time, uh, do you see the mismanagement of utterances by politicians you know, in the you know, prelude to the, to the protest? And what lessons should they learn? going forward? Well, uh, ahead of the protest, we noticed quite unusual, uh, harmful rhetorics from politicians and government appointees. And uh, their supporters saying that it is going to be bloody, it is going to be, uh, uh, there will be looting, and there will be crises, there will be everything. We believe that all those utterances are reckless, misguided, and they were aimed 
at creating a situation whereby Nigerians will never be able to exercise their right to peaceful protest. Even when people like in Lagos, people who are told that, okay, you have to confine yourself to uh, Freedom Park. Mm. Uh, in Abuja, they say you have to go to the stadium. Unfortunately, those people that go to the stadium were also attacked by security forces. Yes, sir. All right, it's a solution. I wish we have more time. Thank you for Thank coming you, to the Hamza. program. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, uh, viewers. This is Issa Sunusi, Country Director of Amnesty International. We reviewed what happened and we hope to have you some other time. Thank you very much.